I want to talk about arithmetic versus geometric averages. Now we compute averages all the time, but there are a couple of different ways to compute them in finance, and you're going to get somewhat different results. So let's, let's look at an example. Suppose you have returns of 10%, 8%, 7%, 15% and let's say minus 3%. If we want the arithmetic average, that's the normal average we think of. You add the numbers together and you divide by the number of observations. So the arithmetic average here is um, the following. You know, 10% plus 8% plus 15 percent plus negative 3 percent and all divided by 4. Okay, pretty straightforward. You've done this many times in your life. And so let's just add it up, see what we get. And divide that by 4 and we get 7.5 percent. Okay, so that's that's our arithmetic average. The geometric average is a little bit different. In fact, let me tell you what the difference between the arithmetic average and the geometric average is, and then we can, we can do a computation. The, um, the arithmetic average tells you what was your return in an average year over this time period. So in, the, in an average year, you earned 7.5%. The geometric average, on the other hand, answers the question, what was your average compound return per year over a particular period? This is not the same thing. Okay? This, is, this is not a compound return. We've just added them up. So how do we do the geometric return? Okay? Well, let me write down the arithmetic average. So I'll call that AA. Okay? We use a summation sign, right? We sum up from i equals 1 to n and we sum up all the ri's and in this case we divide by n. For the geometric average what we do is we do this. We're going to multiply okay so I'm going to use pi that's the sign for multiplication, so i equals 1 to n, we're going to talk about going and taking 1 plus ri, so we're going to multiply 1 plus r1 times 1 plus r2 times 1 plus r3, okay, and then after we're done doing that, we're going to take the 1 to the nth power. So let me just expand that out for you. So we're going to have 1 plus the first year's return times 1 plus the second year's returns. On and on for as many time periods as we have. And then we're going to raise that to the 1 over n power. I mean, think about it. Here we divided by 4 because we added everything together. Here we're multiplying together, so we're going to take the nth root of the number. So let's go, let's look at our numbers here. Okay, so we're going to have 10%. So we're going to have 1.10, and then it's 8%, 1.08, and I believe we have 15%, 1.15, and then we're going to have 1 plus minus 0.03, so that's going to be, so I'll write that out, 1 plus negative 0.03, which is going to be 0.97, and after we get that number, we're going to take the 1 fourth power because we have four observations. So let's see how that looks. 1.1 times 1.08 times 
1.15 times 0.97 and then we're going to raise that to the 0.25 power 1 over 4 is 0.25 we're gonna get 1.0729 actually I should have said I should have given you the formula as this minus 1. Remember, we added 1 to it, so we need to subtract that 1 back out. So let me just adjust my formula. So I'm going to get 1.0729, and I'm going to subtract 1 from that. So I'm going to get 0.0729, or 7.29%. So you're going to get a, a slightly different number when you use the geometric return versus the arithmetic return. So if you're interested in knowing kind of what was your average return um, over the period, arithmetic average is the way to go. If you want to know what your average compound return was, then you want to use the geometric average.